solve problems in horizontal projections. This time, I'm going to teach you on how to solve problems of a projectile involving angle projections. So let's have an example here of a projectile at an angle. A shell is fired at a velocity of 300 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees from the horizontal. The following questions are, what is the time of its flight? How far does the shell go? And what is its maximum altitude? First things first, we need to sketch the situation of the problem. So the shell is fired at an angle of 30 degrees from the horizontal with a velocity of 300 meters per second. Since air resistance here is neglected, we assume that the angle here is equal to the angle on this side. The first question asks us to solve for the time of its flight. Since this is a whole parabola, we are not just talking about the timing going up nor the timing going down. But we are talking about the total time. So time going up plus the time in going down. Next is how far does the shell go pertains to the horizontal displacement, which is our dx. And then the third one, what is its maximum altitude or the maximum height? Okay, that pertains to our dy. Now let's look into the initial velocity, which is still not resolved into its components. So we analyze this one. This is our VIX here, as one of the components of VI, and this is our VIY here. Note that our VIX side is adjacent to the angle 30 degrees. Therefore, to solve for VIX, we use this formula VI times cosine theta. And for our VIY, since this is opposite to the angle 30 degrees, we make use of the formula VIY equals VI sine theta. Now, it will be easy for you to solve for VIX and VIY because you're just going to substitute the values. So for VI, we have 300 meters per second times cosine 30 degrees. And that gives us an answer of 259.81 meters per second. So that's now our value for VIX. Now for VIY, again, substitute the value 300 meters per second for VI times sine 30 degrees. So our VIY is equal to 150 meters per second. Now that we have solved the VIX and the VIY, it's time for us to identify other quantities, all the quantities, both in the X and the Y component. So obviously, our VIX belongs to the X component. And our VIY belongs to the Y component. The total time of flight, or the T, big letter T, is only to be solved under the X component. Why? Because since this is a whole parabola, the T here is the time taken for the projectile to cover the whole range. Okay, what about the Y? Can we also have the time for Y? Of course, yes. However, the time is not the whole time. It's just the time. It's either in going up or in going down. Therefore, 
we will be having small letter T here only. The next thing is identify other quantities, okay, that might not be given in the problem directly, okay? So you just have to analyze the problem if there are still some of the clues that we can get to determine other quantities. Okay, so let's have letter X, uh, the X component. Okay, we have the VIX. We don't have the time yet. Okay, we also don't have the range. Okay, the VX. For the Y, we don't have still the, yes, maximum height, the DY. However, we need to consider, since our VIY is having a value of 150, uh, 150 meters per second, reaching to the maximum height, our VFY becomes zero because the object here at the maximum height momentarily stops before it, goings, it goes down. So our VFY is equal to zero. And since it is a vertical motion, we, all ha we always have to use the gravitational acceleration which is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second square. Okay, so now that you already have all the quantities, both in the components, we will determine which equations can we use to solve any of them, any of the unknown quantities. Okay, let's start with the time here. Since in the x component, we cannot use any of the formula, since there are two more uh, two variables that are unknown. Okay, we just need only one variable unknown so we can solve a uh, quantity given the equation. So let's move to the y. In the y component, we can solve for t. Okay, so there are two formulas to solve for t. You can have t is equal to vfy minus viy over g or that t is equal to square root of 2dy over g. Now, given the two equations, you need to be very careful in determining which of them is most suitable to use to solve for t. Look at the given quantities here. For the first equation, we have VFY minus VIY over G. We are given the VFY. We are also given the v, uh, v, uh, VIY. We have also the value of VFY and we have the value of G. So, of course, the first formula is more convenient to use or it's most more suitable to use so let's have t is equal to vfy minus viy over g substitute the values of course for vfy it's zero minus viy which is 150 meters per second over g which is negative 9.8 meters per second square. And our answer here is 15.31 seconds. Note that the same with the VIX, the T also has been rounded off to two decimal places. Okay, so it's actually not advisable for you to round off answers, especially if they are not yet the final ones because they will affect the accuracy of your final answer. Okay, just for me to be more convenient in substituting the values because it seems too long, I just rounded it off to two decimal places. So we already have the value of t half of the time going up or going down. We can use the value of t here in the y to solve for the value of the total time in the x. Therefore, since t is equal to 2 times t, double the time in the y, then 2 times 15.31 seconds will give us 30.62 seconds. And this is now our total time of flight. Okay, so we already have given the answer in letter A, of course. This is it. Next is how far does the shell go? We already have the T value and the VIX value. To solve for DX, we have VX times T. Remember that this is horizontal velocity and it is constant. Therefore, whatever is the value of the VIX 
is still the same with the value of Vx. Same with the value of the Vx, Vfx. Okay, so no change in the value of the Vx here. So we can just substitute the value of Vx here, which is 259.81 meters per second. Okay, times... Okay, by the way, this is the total time, big letter T, which is 30.62 seconds. And our dx, our dx here is equal to 7,995.38 meters. The first and the second quantities we need to solve for the C. That is C, of course, the maximum altitude or the dy. So our dy, we can use the formula. Two formulas. Either dy is equal to viyt plus gt squared over 2 or the vfy squared minus viy squared over 2g. Um, you just uh, select which of, uh, which of those two equations is more convenient for you. So for me, I will be using the second equation, which is dy is equal to v fy squared minus v i y squared over 2g. Okay, then substitute the values. v of y is 0 minus v i y, which is 150 meters per second. Okay, then we square that one. Of course, we also have to square the zero. However, there's nothing, there's no change at all. And then two times negative nine point eight meters per second squared. Okay, so do the math, and our dy is equal to one thousand one hundred forty-seven point ninety-six meters. So we already have solved the three quantities. Now, if uh, you may wonder if you have got other values different from this, or maybe there is a slight difference, especially in the decimal point. It's because actually you can use different equations as long as you are still following the concept. We can have difference in the decimal point values because we are keeping on rounding off the answers. Okay, so again, as I advised already, do not round off answers if they are not yet the final ones because they will affect the accuracy of the result. Okay, so this is just for my convenience to substitute the values. That's why I am rounding it off. Okay, now for um, in determining the equations to use in solving the problem, you need to consider all the possible equations given these different quantities in the problem, okay? So, very important also that you know how to identify the, uh, the quantities and how to classify them if they fall under the X and the Y component, okay? So, that would be all for this example. Hope you have already understood. Thank you for watching and I hope that you have learned something.